Swift structs let us create our own custom complex data types, complete with our own variables and functions. Here's a simple struct to get us going. We have struct album with let title string, let artist string, and let year int, plus func print summary that prints out title, year, and by artist. So this creates a new type called album with two string constants plus the integer there too. There's also a simple function called print summary that summarizes this album by printing out all three of its variables. Come on then. <laughs> Do you notice how album starts with an A, right? That is the standard in Swift. One second, sorry. Come on. That's how things work in Swift. Just like int has a capital I and string has a capital S and bool has a capital B and set has a capital S and so forth. This is how it works in Swift. When you're referring to the type itself, album, string, int, whatever, you use a capital letter at the beginning. And if you're referring to something inside it, variable inside there or function inside there, you use camel case with a lower first letter. Both camel case. One starts upper, one starts lower. That's how we distinguish between types and things inside types. It's for the most part a convention, but it's a helpful one to try and stick with. Anyway, at this point, album is basically like a string or an int or whatever. We can make them, we can assign values to them, we can copy them and so on. For example, we could make a couple of, yeah, I do see your dog, good girl. We could make a couple of example albums with values in, then print out those values. We could say, uh, let's say, let red equals album, title red, artist Taylor Swift, year 2012. And let wings equals album, title wings, artist BTS, year 2016. So we're making these album things here as if we're just calling a function. We're just going to provide values for title, artist, and year, the constants we had as the variables inside the struct, as values going into there in the order they were defined. Now we have this red and wings constant, we can work with them. We can say print red.title, print wings.artist, and it'll print out red and BTS. Similarly, we can call print summary on those two things, and it'll print out red by Taylor Swift 2012, right? So you can see both red and wings are built from the same album struct we defined. But once we create them, they are their own unique value. They're separate, just like making strings. You don't share one string across your whole program. These are two separate album instances. Also, you can see it's really in action, I think, when you call print summary on each of these structs because that will refer to internally red, Taylor Swift 2012, or wings, BTS 2016. When you call print summary on red, you will get red's title, red's artist, red's year. Call print summary on wings, you'll get wings title, wings artist, and wings year. They are unique and individual, which is exactly what we want. Switch so understands when I say red dot print summary, I want the values inside red, not the values inside wings. Where things get more interesting is when you want to have values inside your structs that can change. To show us off, I'm gonna switch over to Xcode and we'll create a new employee struct that can take vacation as needed. So I'll say uh, there is a struct called employee, employee even, there we go which has a name string and vacation remaining as an int, like that. Inside here, we'll say there's a new function called take vacation days int. And if vacation uh, remaining is greater than the number of days they want to take, brilliant. We'll do vacation remaining minus equals the days they asked for and then print uh, I'm going on vacation and print days remaining, vacation remaining, like that. Otherwise, if we can't go on vacation, we'll just print out, uh, oops, there aren't enough days remaining because you asked for more days than you actually have available to us. Now you'll see Swift has flagged up a big red error. We cannot do that. This function, take vacation inside employee, cannot change vacation remaining. 
it can read it. This line here is fine, the condition is fine, and line 30 is fine, printing the value out, no problem. But it can't change it. And this is down to the way Swift handles constants, because if we made an employee as a constant using let, Swift makes the employee plus all the data inside it. Name, vacation remaining, whatever, 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 whatever. All of it becomes constant. So the struct's instance is constant, its property is constant too. We can call functions just fine, call print summary or whatever, right? But those functions shouldn't be allowed to try and change a struct's data because we made it constant. As a result, Swift makes us take an extra step. Any functions like take vacation here uh, that want to write data must be marked specially. I mean, any that want to read only data, they're fine. Fine as they are, don't worry about it. But when you want to change data, you've got to say this is a mutating function. You just write mutating in front of it. This will change the data of my struct somehow. And bang, the error's gone away. Our code will now build just fine, which is great. But Swift now puts a restriction in place. If I have a variable called Archer, I'll do employee with the name of Sterling Archer and vacation remaining will do 14. I'll do Archer dot take vacation days five and print Archer dot vacation remaining. Let's run that code. I see he had 14, he took five, there's nine remaining, which makes sense because it's variable. But if we made this constant, it's a constant struct, let Archer, now you'll see Swift's very unhappy indeed. Bang. You cannot call take vacation a mutating function on a constant. Mutating means this thing will change the underlying data of the, the struct. This and making it constant means you can't change a struct. The whole thing is constant. And so because we're trying to call a mutating function on a constant, Swift will just go, nope. I refuse to build your code. So it needs to be there. The mutation keyword tells Swift at a glance, only let people call this if it's a variable. Don't let them call it a constant, it shouldn't be allowed. Now we're gonna explore structs in more detail over the next few videos, but I do want to give a few names to things so you understand uh, the terminology we'll be using. Um, we have our uh, variables and constants. What do you want? Come on, up here, come on. Up. When we have variables and constants inside a struct, we call these properties. So name and vacation remaining are properties of the struct here. When we have a function inside a struct like here, take vacation, we call those methods. So properties of variables and constants, functions become methods. Uh, when we create a constant or variable, from our own struct, we call that an instance. So you might have a dozen unique instances of employee or album or whatever, they're unique instances. And then when we make an instance of a struct, which is like this kind of line of code here, I'll go back to being variable again, so it doesn't com complain so much. Um, this thing here, and we call, we create the employee, sorry, this thing, we call this using an initializer. We say employee name Sterling Archer, application remaining 14, that is the initializer for the struct. It initializes the first values, the initial values, hence the name initializer. So it provides initial values for all the properties inside the struct. And that last one, initializer, might seem a bit strange at first because we're kind of treating this like a function call. This looks like a function call. You know, if it, fine, it's got uppercase E at the beginning, but if it was something like, you know, make employee, that looks like a function call, right? It looks like anything else, that's what you do. Function name, open parens, parameter name, colon, value, comma, da 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 da, da right? Um, it kind of is. In fact, it definitely is. This is a little bit of what we call syntactic sugar. Uh, Swift, behind the scenes, silently creates a special function inside the struct inside here called init. And it will use all the properties of the struct. So name, vacation remaining will be 
uh, parameters for the init function. It'll pass them all in automatically for us, and then it treats that as the equivalent of saying employee.init. So it's even co-completing it for me. So it silently makes an initializer called employee.init, which takes name and location remaining. And then this is obviously used a lot, making structs and similar. And so there's a syntactic sugar, a sweetened short version of doing stuff. You can just do employee like that and get the same thing. We've actually relied on this behavior previously. If you remember, I, I, I talked to you about, this is quite a while ago now, about how we can uh, work with doubles. I said, you can't add an int to a double. Remember this from a, a long time ago? And we've got to write code like this, let A equals one, let B equals 2.0, and let C equals double A plus B. And now I think you can see what's really happening here. Swift's own double type is implemented as a struct. And it has an initializer function that accepts an integer. And we're creating a double from an integer. That's what it's doing here. Now, Swift is really intelligent in the way it generates initializer, even inserting default values if we assign them to our properties. So if name here was anonymous, for example, by default, the initializer now will actually remove that. It'll make it optional. Um, I do see your dog, you're a good dog. Um, here, yes, yeah, so I don't include name, just that. So it, it's very, very clever here in terms of what it does, um, which is really helpful. And so for example, I could say, you know, name, that seems important, let's make that not default anonymous, but vacation remaining, <laughs> let's make that equal to uh, 14 by default, like this. And then Swift will silently make for us an initializer with 14 as a default value. Now, if you saw a slight difference there, when I made name have anonymous by default, I had to remove the whole name thing here. That's because name is a constant. It'll always be equal to anonymous. Whereas when it's a variable with a default value, you can still specify it if you want to. You can override the default if you want to. And now that's in place, we can now make different kinds of employees with more or less holiday. We could say, uh, let Kane, I'm sorry, not there, let here, let Kane uh, equal an employee. Uh, there's our, both our initializer now there with name of Lana Kane. And then let Poovy equal an employee. Let's do name and vacation remaining. We'll do Pam Poovy. Head of HR gives herself 35 days of vacation every year. So you get both these things. And that's when we have a variable property. It has a default value, so you can specify if you want to or not. It becomes a default value for the function. Whereas a let one becomes fully constant. You can't change it no matter what.